So I've uh, added the sealer around the, uh, the two rubber gaskets and uh, I'm tightening the screws up now to uh, anchor the ball mount on. Um, and then I'll get a wet paper towel and wipe the rest of that caulk off. Um, just a, a clear silicone, uh, silicone based indoor outdoor window caulk. Anything that will dry up to seal those gaps and uh, we'll clean that off and it'll look fine when it dries because it's clear. I'm uh, mocking this up a little bit different than I did the other one uh, to put this cradle in a bit of a different position on the uh, on the motor bar. So I've taken a piece of cardboard and uh, positioned it, uh, cut it down to the same width as the aluminum and positioned it where I want it. I'm going to make some marks on it here and then uh, cut the aluminum and drill the hole that's necessary to mount this to the uh, to the long bracket. So I've cut the yoke bracket and uh, drilled and drilled a hole and mounted the uh, the actual yoke on the other end and I have the two bracket pieces uh, C clamped together here so I can remove the uh, the bracket in one piece and uh, take it inside and match drill the uh, the hole that's going to go right in here to hold this piece and this piece together. The next thing I'm going to do is put the uh, motor in the bracket. And you'll notice um, when you get your kit that the steering arm is on top of the shaft and the lock collar, which is this piece here, is down here. I actually put the uh, pieces on opposite that um, because of where the uh, cables come out of the kayak hull this is almost a straight shot when the cables are tight uh, to the steering link. The other thing I did was I turned it around so the straight edge is forward because that keeps you from turning the motor uh, too far and upsetting the boat uh, when you're turning a corner. Um, if, you, if you notice, the, the motor can't go any farther than that because of the way this is. If it's turned the other way, it can go well past 90 degrees and you don't want that. So we'll be shifting those around and <clears throat> putting the uh, uh, putting the fin on. I'll tell you about that later. And uh, putting the motor into this bracket for the first time. You have to pull this cable up through the bracket and uh, and then put the motor shaft up through the bracket. And then I'll slide this collar down over the top of everything and uh, lock it on the top. And that's what holds them keeps the motor from falling out the bottom. The next up is a battery installation and as I mentioned earlier this battery is a different form factor than the one that came with the older kit. Um, I believe this is the same case that's used for the extended range battery. Um, so I've made a couple of straps. Uh, this is just uh, ordinary um, one inch lightweight webbing and you know the buckles and such that you can buy at the local kayak store. Uh, or order online, however you want to do it. And I've made uh, uh, two straps that go down through the uh, security loops on the battery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plastic platform that will bridge these two ridges and will stand up on spacers enough that those two uh, belts can slide between here and the bottom of the platform on the outside of the mounting screws and that will secure the battery to the uh, cargo deck in the back of the kayak and then the uh, control plugs in here the motor plugs in there plenty of motor cable I'm a little concerned about the length of the cable for the uh, for the uh, throttle control but we'll get to that uh, a little bit later so the the two ribs in the bottom of this cargo area are four inches apart center to center so I've cut a piece of uh, what basically is an old Walmart cut plastic cutting board um, centered it up and laid out um, hole centers on that so that the straps will come down outside the mounting screws so when you look at where the platform is marked you can see the these are where the four screws are going to go right here down through these in to the underside of the hull and then I'll fasten those with stainless steel screws and nylock uh, um, nuts. And I'm going to put uh, fender washers on the underside 
that I'm going to bend to meet the contour of the underside of this rib. As you can see, I've put two flat washers on each screw above the uh, cargo ridge in the uh, in the hull so that the white platform is spaced up enough that the straps can slide underneath it to uh, to wrap around the platform and anchor the battery in place. So the battery is mounted and it's in there very tight. Um, I do need to get two more of these uh, and finish up these straps on this side but for temporary use this is fine. The battery's well anchored in and uh, not going to be uh, any issue there. The next item up is the installation of the uh, control center for the motor. On the first kayak I did this too. I put this uh, Scotty extension into uh, a rod holder that I mounted in this location which is very similar to where it is on the orange boat and put this arm in and we have a platform that's attached to the controller that snaps into this uh, Scotty fitting right here and that's how my wife controls her boat. Um, I'm toying with either doing this a second time or putting a different mount in so that I can preserve the use of the uh, rod holder that normally goes in this. So open. the rod holder is normally up in that position and I could do the same thing with that that I did with the other boat. The alternative is, is, um, is this Scotty mount right here which requires a hole in the hull in this location which would put the controller in front of me between my knees basically um, and this would give me a, um, uh, a location that allows me to maintain the use of the rod holder and still access the controller without any problem. So I'm going to spend some time trying to fit that and uh, we'll show you the results uh, and how we put it in after I get that one sorted. Well, I opted for the uh, the new uh, newly installed uh, Scotty rod holder bracket and mounted the controller right in front of where I sit and everything is back together and ready to go and we are about to put it in the water and see what happens. So 2005 Tarpon 160i upgraded to Air Pro Phase 3 seating and Torquedo 403 power. Backing out. Motors locked down, we're in reverse, we're backing up. Turning. Now we're turning some more. Oh, I'm loving this. A whole new meaning to the word exercise. I'm going to now stop it and start it again.
So test run number one is finished and uh, everything is working normally. I did have some trouble with the uh, raising the motor and I've got to look at what's going on along the line of that rope and figure out where the uh, potential problems are there. But other than that, I am uh, generally pleased with what I've got. i got to figure out a way to grab on and hold on to that motor cable too. Um, <clears throat> But, and uh, in case you're wondering, if you, uh, if you put this thing in full forward throttle, it'll do about six and a half miles an hour. Hope you enjoy the video, and if you get the opportunity to do this, I think you'll be uh, very happy with the results. And another shout out to my friends at Tongress Rain in Juneau, Alaska, uh, for figuring out how to do this the way it got done. And uh, thanks to Bob. See ya.